Welcome to EPG Patshala. Today we will be learning about the general organization of nervous system and their neurons. After learning this module, you will be able to learn to know about the general organization of the nervous system of the human body. Secondly, you would also know all the neurons present in the nervous system, their classification and their function. So, now we go on to the introduction. The, this module is basically uh, is a very preliminary module where you will learn that how the nervous system of the brain is organized and what are the cells which are present, what are their types and what are their functions. So, what do we see in the general organization of the neurons and the nervous system that the nervous system is a complex organ where it is the, there are divisions into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is the, uh, is the part which comprises the brain and the spinal cord. Whereas, the peripheral nervous system has two branches, one is the somatic branch and the other is the autonomic nervous system. The somatic branch is the one which uh, innervates the limbs. The autonomic nervous system is the part which innervates the visceral organs. The somatic nervous system is further divided into two parts where one is the receiving end which is called as the affector and the other is the part which sends the message and it is the effector and it is also called as the motor part. In the autonomic nervous system which is in short is also called as the ANS, it has two branches one the parasympathetic and the other the sympathetic. The parasympathetic is usually the one which takes care of our normal day to day functioning. Whereas, the sympathetic is the one which takes part in most of the emergency situations. So, that is the broad classification of the organization of the nervous system. Now, the whole nervous system is unique which is made up of several kinds of cells namely the neurons, the glial cells and the stem cells. Now, we can learn about them one by one. The neurons which we see in the nervous system are cells which are much larger than most of the cells in the body. They are complex structures which have a head and a tail portion. The head portion is the one which is called as the soma, whereas the tail portion is the one which is called as the exon. The exon ends in the terminal knobs. The soma or the head is like any other cell, it has a nucleus. Now, then this nucleus is unique in that sense that it does not divide. The cells of the neurons remain in the quiescent stage for the lifetime till they die. And besides this, the soma also carries the other organelles in the cytoplasm. Now, these organelles are mitochondria which give the energy to the cell, there are endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, ribosomes which will participate in the photo in the protein synthesis as well as in the neurotransmitter synthesis which is the prime function of these cells. Besides this, they 
also have lot of cytoskeleton. In fact, cytoskeleton is the one which is responsible for the unique structure. The soma also gives out several projections and these projections are named as dendrites or exons. Now dendrites are different from exons because they are uh, in, in structure they taper whereas the exons maintain the same dia throughout their length. The neurons are of several types and which we will uh, define in their classification. The exon on the other hand is the tail portion and it is the one which is uh, which is filled with exoplasm. Besides this, it has lot of cytoskeletal elements and these cytoskeletal elements help to transport the neurotransmitters which are formed in the soma and these neurotransmitters are transported from the soma to the terminal ends from where they are released. The exon is also overlapped by or there is a lining on these exons which makes them myelinated. If this uh, wrapping is not there on the exon then it is called an unmyelinated neuron and these myelinated neurons work much faster than the unmyelinated neurons and these myelin sheets show a gap intermittently and those are called as the nodes of Ranvier. And when the electrical activity crosses these myelin sheets, they jump from one node of Ranvier to another node of Ranvier and that makes a myelinated sheeted neuron faster acting than unmyelinated neuron. Besides this, the neuron also has to make connections with other neurons and those connections are called as synapses. These synapses are connections between one neuron to another neuron and they could be electrical in nature or they could be chemical in nature. Now if we look at the classification of the neurons, there are different ways in which people have classified these neurons and these neurons can either be classified based on their structure, another method is to classify based on their function, yet another method is to classify them based on the type of neurotransmitters which they release or based on the electrophysiological function of the cell. Now, if we look at the structural classification, then it has been seen that there are four types of neurons. Like we call them the unipolar, the unipolar those neurons which have one soma, one exon and they have no dendrites. The other the pseudo unipolar which is actually a unipolar but its exon is branched into two. So one acts as like a dendrite, the other acts like an exon. The bipolar neurons are similar to unipolar but they have dendrites in their soma and they are part of this, mostly they are part of the sensory system of the nervous system. Then they are the multipolar neurons and these multipolar neurons have number of dendrites on their soma and these are the usual neurons which are found in the most of the uh, nervous system. Now if we look at the functional classification then the neurons can be classified based on the uh, based on their function that either they receive the messages then they are called as the effector or the sensory neurons and they are usually the ones which receive the message and then 
we have the motor neurons which are the effector neurons which carry the message from the brain to the effector organ for example it could be the muscle and then there are interneurons which connect the sensory neurons with the motor neurons those are interconnecting neurons if we look at the reflex arc then an arc consists of a, a showing it shows a effector neuron and the affector neuron that is the sensory neuron the interneurons and the effector neuron so that's how they make a reflex arc now another way of the classification is that the neuro neurons they release different neurotransmitters and accordingly their functions are also different we have several types of neurotransmitters and e the, the neurons which secrete are different so we can have several types if it is a cholinergic neuron it will release acetylcholine and they are mostly excitatory in nature and they are seen to be participating in cognitive functions. If we look at the GABAergic neurons, they are mostly uh, they are releasing GABA that is gamma amino butyric acid and these are mostly inhibitory in action and they can induce their action helps to induce sleep. Similarly, we have other type of neurotransmitters. Now, another classification which is based on the electrophysiology in which we have different kinds of neurons, one which have a very, which are tonically firing or they are firing in a biphasic manner. So, we have different kinds of firing rates based on that we have classified these neurons into three types. Now, as we go further in learning about the different kinds of cells in the nervous system, the next important neuron or the next ne uh, important cell is the glial cell. Now, glial cells are the supporting cells of the nervous system. They do not carry messages, but they support the neurons which are the prime effector cells. And in fact, 90 percent of the cells in the nervous system are the glial cells. They participate in giving nutrition to the neurons and to other glial cells as well as to help in making the cerebrospinal fluid, to remove the toxin, to provide the immunity and so on and so forth. They have number of functions. So, if we look at the different kinds of the glial cells, we see that there are six types. There are four types which are seen in the central nervous system and two types which are seen in the peripheral nervous system like there are astrocytes, microglial cells, appendidymal cells, oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system and there are satellite cells and the Schwann cells in the PNS. Now they have different functions for example the astrocytes have been seen to be providing the blood brain barrier. The microglial cells are participating in the immune cells. The appendidymal cells are important because they produce the cerebrospinal fluid. The oligodendrocytes they form the schwa, they form the myelin sheath of the central nervous system cells. Then we have the satellite cells and the Schwann cells in which of the PNS where the Schwann cells provide the myelin sheath to the uh, peripheral nervous system cells whereas the satellite cells are also participating in covering the neuronal cells. So, what has been seen is that 
there are different kinds of cells and it has been seen that the number of techniques which can be used to study these neurons and some of the neurons which have been studied have been used by uh, has been studied by the techniques of histology in which several kinds of stains which could be fluorescent stains which can also be used. Then single unit recordings where the electrophysiology of the neuron is recorded and the firing rates are also recorded which helps uh, the, the scientists to classify the neurons into different kinds. Besides this, the electron microscopy has done wonders in providing lot of details of the structures which are present in the neuron. Now we see that these the neurons and the glial cells are important cells, but as we have already said that these cells do not divide and many cells they do die or during the lifetime. Now the brain has still has a system to renew itself or some of the neurons uh, it which it loses or if it wants to make new connections there is there are cells called as stem cells present in the brain. Now those are called as the neuronal stem cells. Now these neuronal stem cells can form new neurons, they can also help to form the glial cells and more above this the neuron cells help to give plasticity in learning and memory. Now plasticity means adaptability bringing new changes in the neuron so that it can participate in a particular function in a particular environment. So if we summarize this chapter we find that the nervous system is mainly made up of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. It is made up of neurons and the glial cells and the stem cells. And if we look at these classifications, their classification we find in the structural classification there are four types, the unipolar, the pseudo unipolar, the bipolar and the multipolar. In the functional neurons, functional classification of neurons, we see there are sensory neurons, motor neurons and the interneurons. In the neurotransmitter secreting neurons, we have several types, they are as cholinergic, gabergic, glutamatergic, serotonergic and several types. If we look at the electrophysiological classification, we find that they can be the fast firing type, they can be the tonic types and we most of these studies have been done using the uh, staining techniques or the recording solid uh, single unit recording or the electron microscopy has been used to study these electro uh, these neurons thank you